We get a bunch of different questions sent into 4Drive 24-7, but if there's one that we get probably more than almost any other, it's should I fit a locker and should I go front or rear locker first? So today, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a test with the Luxie. I'm going to see which locker works best and I'm also going to try and explain as best I can how a differential works and how a locker works too. A differential is basically a component of your vehicle's driveline that essentially allows your tyres to spin at different speeds as your vehicle turns a corner. Why do you need that? Well, as you drive in a straight line, your tyres are spinning at the same speed. Problem is, if you get to a corner, your outside wheel is going to spin faster than your inside wheel because it has to cover more distance in the same amount of time. And if both axles are connected together when this happens, the inside wheel will bind up and you won't be able to turn properly. Righto, so I just want to try and demonstrate what happens inside your diff when you're driving in a straight line. To do that, I've just connected a little bit of drive shaft to the flange so I can spin it. And I also just cut up an old axle that I broke and I've marked it so you can see it rotating. Righto, so that's in there. Now, if I rotate this drive shaft, notice how everything's spinning. See how the axle is rotating as well there? But you can see that none of these internal gears are spinning. See that there? If I go back this way, you might see it a bit better. Now, if I put a bit of pressure on this axle to simulate it spinning at a different speed, like when you're turning a corner, see how those internal gears start to spin now? I'll rotate it more. Now, this is a very extreme example because I'm not allowing this axle to move at all, but the principle remains the same there. You can see that, see how those internal gears are now spinning? And those internal gears spinning opposite each other is what allows each axle, and therefore each wheel, to spin independently. That design is perfect for driving on the road. The problem is when you're off road, once you get a tire in the air, one side is holding all this pressure on the side gear and it can't turn, but these gears can still spin freely, which means all of the drive will go to that one wheel in the air, which is useless. So the best way to fix that problem of all the drive going to one wheel is to fit a locking differential. Now there are a bunch of different types and brands out there, but essentially you either have selectable lockers like this one or mechanical slash auto lockers. So this particular type of locker is an air locker. The reason I wanted to show you this one is because the actuator is external. It's just here and you can see what happens a bit better. Whereas I've got a different brand of air locker in my Hilux and that's all internal. Still, the principle remains the same. You can just see what actually happens when you flick that little switch to lock your diff. So when you fit a locker, you essentially replace this internal carrier in the diff. These gears here, the crown wheel and pinion remain but need to be set up again so they contact each other correctly. The way a selectable locker works is that it physically slides a locking ring onto one of the internal side gears inside your casing, which essentially locks all the gears together. Meaning, you get 50-50 drive to each side. Which means even if you're driving and a tyre goes in the air, it still means that the tyre still on the ground will have drive and you can keep moving forward. Whereas without the locker, all the drive will go to the wheel in the air. All selectable lockers follow that same principle. What changes is the design of the mechanism and how that locking ring is activated. For example, in an electronic locker, it uses an electromagnet to activate, whereas an air locker uses compressed air. Righto, so that's a pretty basic explanation of how diffs and lockers work. I'm definitely no expert, but hopefully that gave you a little bit of a better understanding of how everything goes together. Now though, let's head out into the bush to see how lockers work in the real world. So there's all this information out there about lockers. What type should I get? And should I get a front locker or a rear locker first? So I've come out here to the Wadigans because I want to try and do a bit of a test to see which one makes the biggest difference. We're on CPT 80s. You can see the track's a little bit wetter. Poor Luxie's done a little bit of mud bogging, but we're at the rocks now, so it's time to air down and give it a bit of a test. For this test, I'm using selectable air lockers front and rear in the Hilux. I'll drive at a steady 1500 RPM up the test track until I stop unlocked. Then I'll back up and give the same challenge another go with the front locker only, the rear locker only, and then both. I air my tyres down to 15 PSI, which will be the pressure I conduct all the tests on. Right, so straight into it. Uh, now this is unlocked. It's already a pretty big step in front of me, about 1500 RPM. Cool, so, so I started to get the front up. If I turn the wheels, it it is climbing, yeah, there we go. 
But right now, the vehicle's trying to climb two different steps at once. The front is trying to climb a step and the rear is trying to climb a step. So that's where being unlocked has a bit of a disadvantage. Now, obviously, if I was unlocked the whole time and you're trying to get up this track, you could readjust, do a bit of packing, try a bit harder, but that obviously puts more stress on your vehicle and you can damage the track too if you're not careful. So I'm just gonna back up. Now I'm gonna go rear locker only, same drive again. I will have a bit of driver input again this time. So we'll try straight again. So rear locker's on now, 1500 RPM. And I'll try it. There we go, so we're up that step. Yep. Yeah. I'll give it a bit more throttle. You can tell she wants it. Hmm. Okay, she, wa she definitely wanted that, but with steady throttle, I reckon with a bit more momentum, if you're trying to drive that, you'd have it. I just want to see if I'm correct in assuming that. So I just want to do that again with a bit more throttle. Now what I'll do is I'll get the front up. No, maybe not. So the vehicle's bouncing around again a bit there, which is where you can break stuff if you keep going and you keep trying. So I'll back down again. I'll shut the rear locker off and I'll just go front and try it one more time. Righto, so this is front locker only. 1500 RPM. Yep, there we go. Oh, it's definitely much more hungry for it this time. If I just try and, once again, what I did with the rear locker, I'll just back up a bit and try and give it a little bit more throttle when I get to the step. Hmm, maybe this step's too big for both. Righto, so now I'm gonna back down. Now again, I'm trying to drive this at a very steady sort of pace. So this is both lockers, 1500 RPM. There we go. Even that, wow. Now what I'll do here is do what I did before and just try and drive it with a bit more momentum. Wow, that hill was slippery. Even twin locked, the vehicle was struggling a bit. So I just had to have a few goes at it. Now I'm trying this next step. I've shut the front locker off. And there you go, yeah, I'm sort of stuck again on this next step here. So I might back up a touch and just shut the rear locker off and try front. Wow, oh that made a difference. That's good, let's see if I can get, wow, front locker only, got up that step okay. That's pretty cool. Right, so front locker helped on that step, so I'm coming up to another one here. I'm gonna try rear locker only and see how we go. There's definitely a line up here. And there's a section that my front tires will need to climb. So hopefully the rear locker just pushes me up. That's interesting. I could feel the rear just sort of swiveling a bit then. Right, oh, that's interesting. So just with not much throttle then, I could feel the rear was definitely pushing me, but it kind of started to pivot a bit. What I'll do now is I'm just gonna back up. I'm already up the, just to see if it feels any different. I'm gonna go back down the step completely and shut the rear off and just try front only and see if it makes a difference. Same line. Now I'm starting to crawl now. get into the same spot. It definitely felt a little bit more straight than I've, I found then just with the rear locker only. It was kind of just pivoting a bit. And the reason for that is 
the rear's talking up a fair bit with all that drive and because the front essentially loses drive once that happens all the force is coming from the rear so it's pushing the vehicle from the back and if you've got more weight over the rear axle as well the vehicle will start to torque over a bit more so if you pick up a wheel it can be bigger and stuff with a rear locker so now i'm going to try same again but both on and i'm i reckon like one locker both times had me up pretty much the whole way so i'll just try Oh, and there we go, twin locked actually, straight up. Right, this last step is definitely the most technical out of all of them. And it's one that where having two lockers really comes into its own because it's not a step you want to get wrong, or the line I'm trying anyway. Because it takes a bit of positioning to get it right. There you go. Wow, that was pretty interesting. So definitely on that last more technical line, it was really where having two lockers definitely comes into its own uh, because it wasn't really a, a, I mean, I definitely picked a more difficult line, but it wasn't one you'd want to get wrong. You could slip into that hole and do damage. I've actually done damage on that exact section in the pony um, before we had bar work, but it's one you really want to get right, take your time, pick your line, and having two lockers just really gives you the control. You definitely could try it with one or the other, but uh, it'd probably take a little bit more um, adjusting, some rock packing and stuff like that. But uh, that was a really interesting test, I think. You could, I really was surprised, to be honest, with um, switching one off and trying the other and seeing how the car behaved. And you could really feel it in the driver's seat, how each locker affected how the vehicle drove. Um, that was a surprising test. Pretty interesting. Front locker pros. You get more control to get the front tyres up an obstacle first and keep driving. The vehicle won't pivot around the axle as much, it'll keep the front of the vehicle online easier as there's equal traction as you steer. It can also make up for a lack of wheel travel in the front end of an independent front suspension vehicle, and if you have a tight rear limited slip differential like in a Patrol from factory, your vehicle's capability will significantly improve. For the cons, it's definitely harder to turn if it's engaged on slow technical sections. The vehicle can also struggle a bit if the rear falls into a hole and there isn't enough momentum to drive through it, particularly if the vehicle is loaded in the rear. With the rear locker, the pros are, it pushes the vehicle forward, lets you still use the full range of steering while driving. Another advantage is downhill, it can help to keep the vehicle a bit more controlled if a rear tyre goes in the air while descending, because you still have drive to the tyre on the ground. And another advantage is rear lockers are much more common in factory vehicles these days, which is another bonus. For the cons, a loaded up vehicle will pivot around the rear axle more if you get hung up. For example, if a rear tyre drops into a large hole or below a big rock step. Having a rear locker in can also make wheel lifts bigger on steep inclines as the vehicle will tend to torque over while driving. For twin locked, the pros are, you get the ultimate in control and driving. You always have drive going to your tyres. It increases the capability of your vehicle massively. Twin locking a vehicle will allow you to drive much more extreme terrain comfortably. And the cons are that it's the most expensive to set up, and having a twin locked vehicle can put you and your vehicle in more extreme and sometimes risky situations as it will drive much further with both lockers engaged as capability is increased massively. It's no secret that being twin locked definitely gives you the most amount of control off road. Plus, it also lets you pick much more technical lines, so your driving skill is also going to get a lot better as time goes on. Having a rear locker only though definitely gives you a lot of control off-road, and it doesn't affect your steering. Plus, if you've bought a new four-wheel drive, chances are it's already got one. But for me personally, I actually prefer a front locker first, and I really noticed that on the test we just did, having the front locker in uh, kept the vehicle much more in line, kept the vehicle straight, and was able to climb up obstacles a bit better. 
Because it was selectable as well, if you did need to readjust, you could back up, switch the locker off, readjust, switch it back on again, which definitely helped. Another reason I actually prefer front lockers first is because when this Hilux was IFS, I bought a second-hand front locker and chucked it in, and it really took the vehicle to the next level. Because it had independent front suspension, it didn't have a lot of wheel travel, and it was lifting wheels on pretty much every single track. Putting a front locker in really made it way more capable, but because it was selectable, it gave me lots more control as well. A way I used to think of it was, if you lift a wheel in an IFS vehicle and your front's unlocked, you essentially become a two-wheel drive vehicle as the only tyres on the ground are your rear tyres. But if you lift a wheel in an IFS vehicle and you have a front locker, with it engaged you still are a three-wheel drive vehicle if both your rear tyres are on the ground as well. So there's essentially three main types of locker on the market today. You've got your air actuated lockers, your electronic actuated lockers, and then you've also got your mechanical or auto locking diffs as well. There's also cable actuated lockers as well, but they're not that common, so we're just gonna focus on the other three. When it comes to purchasing a locker for your vehicle, we reckon there's two main factors that will affect what locker you choose. That being your budget and your driving style. Selectable lockers like air and electronic lockers are the most expensive, but they give you the most control because you can choose when you need the extra traction and just flip a switch. On top of that, it means that when they're not engaged, the differential will act as normal. So when you're driving around on the road, it becomes an open differential and you don't even notice that the locker is there. The disadvantages of both these lockers is the price. An air locker, for example, is around about a thousand bucks or more, depending on your vehicle model, just for the locker. And you also need to have an air source installed as well. So factor that in if you don't have one already and you're looking at air lockers. I have my compressor for my lockers installed here under the bonnet. Another disadvantage of the air locker is that if it's not set up correctly, you can actually get air leaks in the system, which can be a pain when you're out in the middle of the bush and your lockers aren't working. Aftermarket electronic lockers are generally more expensive than air lockers for the locker itself, but the advantage is they're a bit more straightforward to install the parts that are needed to run the locker. You just need to install the wiring loom, the switch and run power down to your diff once the locker's installed in it. Which makes it one of the easiest selectable lockers to install the hardware for because you don't need to install a compressor and airline so the cost works out to be similar if you're also buying a compressor. And finally there's the auto locker. If you're on a bit more of a budget it really is hard to go past the bang for buck you get out of an auto locker like the ones I've got in the Pony Lux. They work a bit differently. They're a simple and very effective way to get extra traction. A locker like the ones in the Pony are essentially always in a locked state and will unlock when there is differential action. Or put simply, when a tyre is spinning faster than the speed the differential is going at, for example when you're going around a corner and one wheel spins faster than the other like we explained earlier. While these are a great option particularly if your vehicle does more off-road work than on-road work, if you have an auto locker in the front, one thing I found particularly when I entered the Pony in a full drive competition is that if you're driving very slow technical tracks, it can be difficult to turn. One way to get around that though is to rock the vehicle back and forward to release the locker or to unlock one hub so you can steer. Another disadvantage is because they'll essentially unlock as you go around a corner, they can tend to be a bit clunky and loud on the road and you do notice you have them in. That said though, the main advantages of an auto locker are that you don't need to run any wires down to your diff, you don't need to have a compressor already and run airlines and they're also a really good budget option as well. For example, an auto locker is generally around about half the price of a selectable one. All of these types of lockers, selectable or auto lockers, have their advantages and disadvantages. As we said before, it comes down to your driving style and your budget and you need to factor these things in before you make your purchase. For me personally, I've had air lockers in my vehicle for five years and they've never let me down. What matters above all else is how the locker is installed you need to make sure that it's installed by a professional who knows their way around a locker and knows what they're doing. If they're set up wrong, they're just gonna give you problems. Don't just take my word for it though. Here are some of the boys with their experiences using lockers and which ones they prefer. Radio lockers, front versus rear. It's a question that I tell you what has been around as long as lockers themselves. If you own a vehicle, like the big GU back there that's got a pretty solid LSD in the rear, you can put a locker up the front and you kind of get the best of both worlds. However, for me personally, I, I just like the feel, the way a vehicle drives when the locker is in the rear as opposed to the front. It's just a personal choice. You push a wheelbarrow, you don't pull a wheelbarrow. So I prefer to have the lockers in the rear of the vehicle. It's exactly what I've got in the big GU. 
that's my preference, rear locker. Front of rear lockers, a million dollar question. I reckon a lot of people ask themselves this. They don't have a lot of money to spend, so it's usually one locker they get the choice of. Do you put in the front or the back? Me personally, on especially Toyota vehicles, I'd be chucking in the back because they have a really weak LSD. Um, the locker makes it so much more capable. I'd probably go as far to say a locker, a single rear locker would probably be the best bang for buck off-road mod you could possibly make to a vehicle. Without a doubt, I choose a rear locker, particularly in this vehicle, lifting front wheels up all the time, trying to do the hard obstacles. My rear wheels are the only ones that are grounded, so I count on having a rear locker. Hey guys, Pete from Ultimate 9. Talking about lockers today, whether we should uh, front locker or rear locker, it's a tricky one. Um, you know, in an ideal world, if the budget allows, it's great to have uh, front and rear lockers, but I understand that's not always um, achievable. So different applications for different lockers, in my view. Um, when I'm descending down a steep hill, I find the rear locker really handy to minimise the roll on of the vehicle. Um, also find it really handy through ruts, deep ruts, uh, bog holes, if I want to push the car through. Um, where I'd love a, a, an application of a front locker is on hill climbs. Um, we're trying to get that front end up and over. We're not pushing it into the object. The flick of a button uh, gives us that positive traction to get the car up and over that object. So uh, in an ideal world, front and rear lockers, 100% traction. Um, but if I had to make the choice, I think a rear locker is probably a great starting point. Look, in my opinion, if you were only going to put one locker in your car, you would put it in the rear. Because when you're going to be climbing something or going up that hill, it's going to transfer the weight to the rear. You're going to get some more traction and that lock diff at the rear is going to push you up where you need to go. If you've got no lockers at all, I'd probably choose a rear locker straight up. Only because they're your drive wheels predominantly, a lot of weight going towards the back. You're better off pushing something than pulling it up a hill at the moment, yeah. Rightio, what about choice of lockers? We've got air, we've got E, and we've got auto locker. Okay, I'm gonna take auto locker straight out of the equation. Never been a big fan of auto lockers. They've got their place, I've just never liked them. Air lockers, got an air locker in this bad boy, I've got an air locker in Shorty. The one in Shorty, I've had in there for 15 years and it has never, not once, has it had a problem. Another thing I like about air lockers is if you get the kit that makes the compressor able to also pump up your tires, two birds, one stone. For me, Air lockers. I've used just about every locker there is under the sun. I've used e lockers, I've used air activated lockers, vacuum lockers, auto lockers, manual lockers, you name it. I reckon the best ones that you can use in terms of the strongest would have to be air activated lockers. I've had a lot of success running those. Um, I broke five electronic activated lockers in a row once before I swapped back over to air, and I've never had a drama since I've gone air. Um, I like the way that um, air activated lockers engage. Um, they, they make the whole diff center stronger in my opinion, um, not to mention um, they're a lot more bush proof as well. Some people have an issue with air lockers um, because they tend to leak air and stuff like that. Um, I, I say this is with every single locker, if it's not installed correctly, it's not going to work properly. You install an air locker correctly, you'll never have an issue like that and it'll work every time. When it comes to choosing lockers, I've actually had both. I actually prefer the electromagnetic, which is an e-locker. Come factory standard with most of the 79 series. I've never broken one, and I've done some of the toughest stuff. For me and our trusty uh, GU, uh, we've got uh, front and rear air lockers fitted. It's something that I've used for, for 20 years now, and I love the flexibility uh, and the instant on and off ability of the air locker. Uh, you find those applications when you're climbing, uh, you need to do a hard left or a hard right with a, a positively locked front end that can minimise or it can push back on the steering. A flick of a switch, bang, it's off and I can get the car around. Um, they've always been very uh, trustworthy, reliable. Um, touch wood, I've had no uh, issues and it's one of my favourite accessories on a four wheel drive. Okay, which one would I choose out of the e-locker, the auto locker or the air locker? Well, I would choose an air locker. The reason behind this is that I've already got a compressor on board to pump the tyres up. So I'm going to utilise that air compressor to push my locker in and out. I choose an air locker over the other ones. The air locker is awesome. They're a much stronger locker, you can crash lock them. But the do come with some downsides. You've got to buy a compressor. You've also got to run different circuits. So you've got to run electrical circuit to the compressor. You've got to maintain a compressor and you also need to maintain the airlines to the locker and the locker itself. So there's a bit going on there where with an e-locker you're just running a switch and some power straight to that e-locker. 
They're not as strong. I have an e-locker in the front of our little Hilux, and you've seen that climb up some things. It goes really good, but I'm not using that as a crawly boy every weekend. So it really depends on what you're gonna use it for. Well, there you go. Most of the boys said a rear locker is the one they prefer, which just goes to show that it really comes down to the type of driving you're doing and the type of vehicle you have. If you've got mates who have lockers in their vehicles, whether it be front or rear, go for a drive in them and see how it feels, particularly if the vehicle is similar to yours because that will give you the best real world experience to understand it for yourself if you've never driven a vehicle with lockers before. As you can see, there's pros and cons to each locker. But I'm gonna put it to you though, which locker do you prefer for your setup and why? Leave it in the comments below and I'll be sure to check it out. Hopefully this video gave you a bit more info on what locker you should get first to suit your setup. I tried to be as fair as I could be and presented the pros and cons of each. So just remember that no matter what locker you decide to put in your four-wheel drive, it needs to be set up perfectly to give you a long, trouble-free life. So if you're not sure, get a reputable diff specialist to install a locker for you and set it up so it works well. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and I might even be able to get to do some more. Also, if you've got any other mods that you want me to dive into a little bit more, some more technical info, make sure you leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to check them out to get a few more ideas. Other than that, the Luxie's already dirty, so I'm going to keep wheeling, find some more tracks, but I'll catch you next time.